Hey guys, it's Keshav here from Dart Dashes and today I'm gonna be reviewing the Lure Echo Lure 2. So starting off with the design, we have a full metal body with curves to the back that meet chamfered edges. Towards the back, we have the camera, dual LED flash and a fingerprint scanner placed under the camera module. There is a small yet noticeable camera bump. On the right we have the volume rockers and power button, on the top we have an IR blaster, on the bottom we have the USB type C port and speaker grills, on the left we have a SIM tray that can hold 2 nano SIMs, towards the front we have the 5.5 inch display, the earpiece, sensors, notification LED and front facing camera can be found on the top chin, 3 backlit navigation buttons can be found on the bottom chin. These nav keys can be seen only when they are in use and blend in with the panel when not in use. Nice touch. The display has an ugly black border running around it that I personally stopped noticing after some time but still hate on. So if you guys haven't already noticed, there is no headphone jack in this phone. Welcome to 2016. So the Lure 2 has a pretty standard design for a 2016 smartphone. Full metal body, fingerprint scanner at the back and like every other metal phone, it's a slippery one. The curves to the back and the chamfered edges do help with the overall grip of the phone and for the design aspect, there's nothing much to complain over here, I really do like it. The 5.5 inch 1080p display has a pixel density of 401 ppi. There is no mention of any glass protection, however an olophobic coating is present to keep fingerprints out. The display has good color reproduction, great viewing angles, right amounts of saturation and contrast and is overall a very pleasant display to view. It's also bright enough to be visible under direct sunlight. Coming to the hardware underneath, this phone packs a Snapdragon 652 processor, 3GB of RAM and 32GB of internal storage that is non-expandable. In the 3 weeks of my testing, this phone performed really well. Apps open up quick, no lags or stutters, great memory management and it was a pleasure to use. Gaming on this phone was great too, I played Asphalt 8 and Modern Combat 5 on the daily and all my Pokemon Go time was spent on this phone. Coming to the cameras, we have a 16 megapixel rear camera with an aperture of f2.0, coupled with face detection autofocus and the 8 megapixel front facing camera with a wide angle lens. This camera takes good pictures under well lit conditions and does a good job in retaining detail and colors. However, under low light, there is a lot of noise and you really need stable hands to get decent shots. Video was versus still with the captured footage, lacking dynamic range and having a lot of noise and artifacts, making the footage entirely unusable in my opinion. Snow motion footage was, my god, the worst thing ever. The friend facing 8 megapixel shooter does however produce good selfies. So coming back to the unpresent headphone jack. So Le Echo removed the headphone jack from the Lure 2 and implemented their own USB Type-C audio standard called CDLA. If you don't want to use CDLA earphones or headphones that Le Echo sells on their own e-commerce website, they do provide a 3.5mm to USB Type-C converter that is in the box. So about the CDLA earphones, I would like to talk about them but I don't have one. Uh, Le Echo failed to provide me one with my review unit. So in order to get my hands on one, I ordered a fresh Lure 2 phone on their first flash sale and guess what? I did not get their CDLA earphones with the unit I ordered too. So I called up Le Echo and asked him what had happened to the earphone that I was supposed to get with the unit I bought. This was their reply. 
people who did not get their CDLA earphones on the first flash sale will be sent a code via SMS two weeks after the purchase of their device and using the code they can place an order for free on lemol.com their own e-commerce site for the earphones and as of date it's been more than two weeks and I haven't received any code and I also have not got my earphones. Audio via the adapter was average at best. The IR Blaster on this phone does not support third-party apps from the Play Store and is limited to the app that Le Echo provides within the phone, which led to a frustrating experience. The fingerprint scanner may not be the fastest, but it does get the job done. The Lure 2 comes with a non-user replaceable 3000mAh battery that lasts me one full day of normal use and most of an intensive usage day. The phone comes with a fast charger in the box that is rated at 12 volts and 2 amperes. This is close to Qualcomm's Quick Charge 2.0 and should give you 50% charge in half an hour. Coming to the software experience on this phone, there isn't much to say here. It runs Le Echo's own custom UI called the UI 5.8 that is based on Android 6.0 Marshmallow. Like any other Chinese OEM skin, this doesn't have an app drawer and all the apps are on the home screen. Also, EUI has a theme store that exactly has 9 themes. Trust me, I counted. They also shifted all the quick toggles from the notification panel and put them in the recents panel just to give it a little twist because there is nothing else that is exciting to you. There's a bunch of bloatware that Leiko calls its internet ecosystem that's made up of a couple of streaming services and there ends the whole software too. Summing up my experiences with this phone, I would call the Lure 2 a mixed bag. It performs really well, the design is really good and I like the fast charging capabilities that are included in the phone. But there is the positives. I think the cameras are really average even considering the price range. The IR Blaster does not support third party apps from the Play Store so most of my devices ended up being not supported by the IR Blaster in this phone. And Removing the headphone jack was a really stupid move. The Lure 2 is a budget phone. See if this phone was a flagship like the Moto Z or the iPhone 7, switching the headphone jack for a USB Type-C or a lightning converter and an audio implementation with those standards would have worked differently. When a person buys a phone in the budget segment, they would rather prefer to have the standard 3.5mm headphone jack because USB Type-C audio peripherals currently are not cheap. 3.5mm headphone jack is the way to go in the budget segment currently and any type of experimentation I think should be done in the flagship segment of smartphones for different types of audio peripheral implementations or whatever you guys call it and that is the major bummer for me with this phone on one side we have the redmi note 3 which offers you a larger battery an ir blaster that supports third party apps we have a headphone jack and a decent camera i'll just end this review by saying that the lure 2 is just not there yet so thank you guys for watching this video hit like if you liked it dislike if you disliked it Subscribe for more content and constructive criticism in the comment section below and I'll catch you guys in the next one.